There's no debate. Population is growing and our cities need to grow to accommodate. But how do we balance giving the population up-to-date, dignified, and comfortable housing while still meeting our carbon net zero goals for 2050? Population growth means we will need more energy, more resources, and as many experts are saying, more carbon. The world's population has doubled in less than 50 years and is set to keep rising. A linear smart city with no roads, cars, or emissions. Our growing population puts increasing pressure on resources, food, water, energy, as well as infrastructure. By 2050, cities worldwide will have 5 billion new inhabitants. Globally, 80% of these populations will live in cities compounding an already existing housing crisis. And by 2030, 1.2 million kilometers of city-covered land area will be added. This seems oppositional to our carbon goals, especially when you consider cities globally consume 75% of energy and materials, as well as generate 80% of greenhouse gas, not to mention city air pollution kills 1.8 million people annually. What has to be done for cities to accommodate our climate goals is both to stop emitting greenhouse gases as well as adapt to a changing climate. We're at a moment right now where we really need to take action. And if cities don't adapt to where the climate has moved, to where society has moved, we're not gonna be in good shape. We need to house 3.8 million more households in the United States alone. Sustainability is a critical issue facing our cities and urban environments today. The first thing that always comes to mind is housing and that we need more of it. And that is true, but it's actually much deeper than that. Over time, it's easy for these cities to get congested, for one older technology to get built on top of another technology. Most city infrastructure in the U.S., as is most infrastructure in general, is outdated or near its life expectancy. And, and with this comes the risks of failing infrastructure and some devastating consequences that we're seeing happen around the country from electrical outages to issues with water supplies to simply decaying buildings. But it's also a huge opportunity for cities and for local governments to be able to update their infrastructure and do so in a way that is uh, prepared for the future and is much more environmentally friendly. One case study for the rapid introduction of climate tech and infrastructure is New York City's own One Vanderbilt. The new skyscraper, which opened in 2020, broke ground in 2016. It was designed not only to be a gorgeous luxury building, but also the most eco-conscious building to ever grace the New York City skyline. So One Vanderbilt is a phenomenal sort of building from an engineering perspective in that it integrated a natural gas turbine. One Vanderbilt also does some incredible things regarding energy efficiency and water reuse. I think really it's, it's, it's a landmark piece in terms of engineering science and moving the building sciences forward. In 2012, this tech was at the forefront of climate technology, but with growing speed of climate tech due to growing demand, some aspects of the building are already dated. One Vanderbilt's turbines burn natural gas, and while natural gas is cleaner than most fossil fuels, it's no longer considered to be the best option and it is not in compliance with New York City Local Law 97. Investing so much in something like a turbine was maybe sh a little short-sighted in that uh, eventually they would need to wean the building off of even natural gas. I do think Local Law 97 should take into account the fact that a place like One Vanderbilt took some big risks in trying to develop a new type of technology in its, uh, in or integrate that into its building. The truth is that most buildings, especially in older cities, have a large carbon footprint. One Vanderbilt is still one of the most climate-friendly buildings in New York, but this shows just how fast new climate legislation is being conceived, along with new clean tech for urban buildings, not just in New York, but all over the world. The new cities being conceived around the world want to set a new standard of urban living, one that's quieter, cleaner, and prioritizes sustainability and green space. There are some incredible projects out there. Nome, Smart Forest City, Chengdu Sky Valley, Amravati, that are doing some pretty incredible things um, in the smart city universe. What I think they're getting right is that they're not conforming to 
traditional models and methods on how we get to sustainability. They are coming at it with a blank slate and saying that we're going to measure how people are moving, what they're consuming, what they're going to do, and we're going to use that to inform future design. Neom, or the line as it's been called, feels right out of a sci-fi movie. The plan for Neom is for communities to be built around people, not cars, and prioritize walking and high-speed transport links. It'll be a hub for innovation, an entirely new model for sustainable living. This system will use the spine, a physical digital infrastructure layer beneath the ground that will weave 5G, fiber, satellite, and wireless solutions throughout the communities. I think the challenge they have is that many of them have been, um, I would say, oversold and under-delivered. And I think the challenge that is, is that undermines public credibility and public confidence. When I see images, mock-ups of these cities, I immediately have visions of a Jetsons future. You look at them from an idyllic standpoint. It's very important to have a much more iterative, ideally fast iterative solution that integrates into the built world. We have many more cities that are already built where the land is spoken for. We unfortunately don't have the benefit of starting with a clean slate. It is technologies that integrate and are effective day one ROI into the existing built world that are gonna help us succeed in decarbonization. While these projects in development allow us to visualize a different kind of future for city dwellers, there are technological advancements, small and large, that are already here. There's all sorts of new technology being developed that will change the way we live, whether it's through the addition of green space, the addition of high-speed transit, how we source our energy, how we source our water, how we heat and cool our buildings, how we dispose our trash, or even how we create the very structure of the buildings themselves. One of the first things we need is the ability to understand the problem and how to address it. Platforms like N0 have been developed to report on and reduce carbon emissions, I'm Adam Kramer. I am the CEO of N0. Data is at the heart of the entire climate transition and all the work we're doing. First and foremost, helping cities understand where they are on their climate journey. What are their emissions? Because you can't change what you can't measure. Then N0 is trying to help identify strategies they can do to reduce that impact. There's a lot of this technology already deployed that gives us up to the minute readings on electric usage, on air conditioning usage, to understand how buildings and how property is responding in different conditions, not just weather, but occupancy, weekend versus weekday performance, how interventions that are being implemented are actually supporting this journey in decarbonization and hopefully reducing cost. Another big theme in the future of infrastructure seeks to solve housing through modular building. We will need new buildings as our cities grow and we need to make them sustainably and affordably. Assembly OSM is a company that builds quick modular housing solutions equipped with the latest sustainable technology for urban environments. Assembly can help cities transform by addressing both the climate and the housing crisis in one shot. Modular construction has the potential of building a lot more housing at lower costs at much greater speeds. We use the tools of manufacturing instead of the tools of architecture to model our buildings at a manufacturing level of detail. We have people throughout the world that make different components like fully finished bathroom pods and the structure. We just clip it together in our facility and then ship it out and stack it on site. We use a steel-based system which reduces embodied carbon by up to 39%. Modular can mean high quality. It can mean capital A architecture. It can mean really stunning custom buildings. And we're really trying to change the way that people think about what modular is capable of. New innovative cities are being planned all over the globe. And while companies seek to create new inroads into every part of the urban environment, some things remain constant, like our need for cement. My name is Cody Finke. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Brimstone. Cities are built out of cement and concrete. I mean, globally as a species, humans produce about 7.5% of CO2 emissions just from producing cement. Brimstone is a company that I co-founded that produces carbon negative ordinary Portland cement. We produce a waste product that actually sequesters CO2. 
if we want to keep living the lives that we live in conventional buildings, we need to keep using cement. Brimstone and decarbonized cement is vital for doing that in a way that is sustainable on the planet. As the world changes and populations grow, we don't have to sacrifice our emissions goals or our standard of living. These lofty decarbonization goals and sustainability standards that are emerging tend to focus on things like ROI and technologies and costs. And that's important, but they also will improve quality of life. And I think what we'll see is that as people in our cities, in the built world, start experiencing better living environments, more efficient HVAC via heat pumps means more consistent temperature at home and at work. Electric vehicles means less noise pollution and less emissions. All these things will make our quality of life better. These improvements will come from a combination of new technology being developed, as well as legislation and incentives, making the new face of our cities more livable, more accessible, and more green than ever before.